プレイヤーの職人私の世界へようこそ私の世界私の名前は茅場明彦今やこの世界をコントロールできる唯一の人間だ諸君は自発的にログアウトすることはできないまた外部の人間の手によるナーブギアの停止あるいは解除もありえないもしそれが試みられた場合ナーブギアの信号阻止が発する高出力マイクロウェーブが諸君の脳を破壊し生命活動 You guys want to play Uno real quick and I can record it and make that my upload tonight? I don't have Uno, so go fuck off. Everyone has Uno, dipshit. It came free with your fucking Xbox. I didn't get it. I have the oldest Xbox known to man. No, you don't. I bought mine on day one, you fucking tard. Well, mine didn't have it. You have Uno, you fucking dick. I don't have it, you fucking dick. Yeah! Yeah! I don't fucking have Uno, motherfucker! Go to Uno on the arcade and you'll be able to download it for free, you fucking motherfucker! It's a fucking card game, they don't even charge people for it! 9, 10, or 11, You don't know a goddamn thing, it's fucking Uno, it's free! I don't have Uno! It's free, you fuck! Is this going on YouTube? Before we get started, this video was a request by one of the wonderful Subscribestar patrons. Dude's been waiting a long time for this video and I hope it was worth the wait. Sword Art Online, a pretty infamous name for those familiar to anime. For some, it's a terrible, overrated franchise that embodies all the worst aspects of the anime industry. For others, it's a flawed gem of a series that gets way too much hate for a bad first impression, something that has significantly improved since it started, and every entry since gets better and better. Which side is true? I have no fucking clue. It's one of those arguments I really don't want to get involved in. The most I know about Sword Art Online is that the first season is a meh isekai, and some people really like the spin-offs and sequels. You might think it's weird that I'm reviewing a franchise I'm not familiar with, and you're right, but here are my excuses. I'm not watching 20 hours worth of sequel animes to talk about one season of a show. Also, fuck you. I only really watched the first 25 episodes, and that was it. I can't speak for the rest of the series. But from what I hear, it really does get better as it goes on. People say the characters get more fleshing out, the lore becomes a lot more interesting, and especially the villains become better, having more interesting motivations and just outright getting more threatening. But, I'm just gonna talk about the first season of the anime, aka the one everyone makes fun of. If you're completely unfamiliar with Sword Art Online, here's a quick rundown. Sword Art Online is the adaptation of a series of light novels written by Reki Kawahara. It follows the protagonist Kirito through his various misadventures through a bunch of different virtual reality MMO games. But the series gets its namesake from the first game that gets covered, Sword Art Online. 
The basic premise of Season 1 is that the highly anticipated MMO, Sword Art Online, finally launches. To play it, people need to strap their heads into high-tech helmets that completely immerse the players into the game. You essentially knock yourself out and just completely envelop your brain in this video game. Well, as everyone is sinking into their new time killer, they suddenly find they can't log off, and one of the main developers of the game appears to explain what's going on. The game won't let them leave. If they attempt to log off or escape Sword Art, their helmets will fry their brains with a fatal amount of microwave radiation. The only way to end the nightmare is to make it through all 100 floors of the big MacGuffin dungeon sitting in Einkard, the main region of the game. It sounds relatively easy. People who play MMOs are some serious turbo nerds. This should be over in about a week. Well, there's another catch. If you die in the game, the helmet kills you then too. Thousands of players, ranging from grown adults to small children, are trapped in a game that will explode their heads if they try to escape die, or somebody from outside the game tries to remove the helmet. So these players are well and truly stuck in the game world, forced to do whatever it takes to survive, including murdering other players. Things are less than ideal here. Luckily, our protagonist Kirito is an early adopter of the game, one of the few thousand people picked to beta test Sword Art Online, so he spent more time in it than most other players. And through his adventures, he makes connections with all the various people trapped in Sword Art, but along the way he keeps finding himself running into a girl named Asuna, who leads a guild trying to escape the game and do whatever it takes to win. And every time they interact with each other, they just seem to get a tiny bit closer, maybe developing something between them that can be a real emotional connection. Okay, so here's something to say about Sword Art Online. Shocker. It's not the worst anime you've ever seen. The world is kinda interesting. Seeing a nice, friendly MMO turn into a literal death game. You get these interesting clashes between a bright world full of wonder that's still pretending to just be an MMO, and the absolute terrifying shower thoughts moments of how there is untold amounts of suffering inflicted on people that really didn't do anything to deserve this, they just wanted to play video games. The problem is less so much what Sword Art Online is. It's more of what it represents. SAO is a very popular series, even if it's also extremely popular to hate it. And if something gets a lot of attention and money, it can become what is known as a watershed series. Basically, you see a trend of other works ripping off elements of a franchise to try and catch lightning in a bottle too. And SAO basically created a resurgence in what is known as the stuck in the MMO subgenre of Isekai. That's right, Sword Art Online is not the first example of people being sucked into a video game for anime. Dot Hack is still king of the genre, don't fucking at me. Now, some people might be wondering what the term Isekai even is. Well, it literally translates to another world. And colloquially, it refers to stories where normal people are taken to to unfamiliar settings and forced to have adventures in them. Everything from Kanasuba, Sword Online, Overlord, Rising of the Shield Hero, that time I was reincarnated as a slime. The list is fucking extensive at the moment. The Isekai genre, in no exaggeration, exploded in Japan. There's more Isekai stories than there are stars in the sky. And this is sorta of where people throw blame at SAO. Now as stated, Sword Art is not the first example of an Isekai through video game type story. Hell, there were shitload of Isekai stories in the 90s, just it usually involved some schoolgirl finding an enchanted amulet and meeting hot guys, or a schoolboy becoming a child soldier and getting PTSD. Now when it's done right, an Isekai story can be really fun and satisfying. The epitome of the classic hero's journey formula you hear nerds that care way too much about Star Wars talk about all the time. You get a dopey, naive protagonist slowly learn how to navigate their new home, and eventually become a true badass. They start off as an idiot, but by the end they really do become a hero. And here's the problem. SAO kinda skips a few of these steps. Well, Dick, here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. Kirito never really develops as a protagonist. He starts off highly skilled at the game, and his personality never really ever needs to iron out as things go on. In fact, it's so bad it kind of conflicts itself. Like, on one hand, Kirito is supposed to be traumatized about his experiences being trapped in the game, yet he's still able to laugh and act jovial with people. It's weird. Once again, this is purely talking about the first season. Apparently, it really does get a lot better as time goes on. But the first season is, well, the first thing people watch in regards to SAO. Now, Kirito being a badass is not the issue itself. There are plenty of stories where the main character is unafraid to fuck people up. But that's usually where another conflict comes into play. I talk about this a lot 
in my Berserk Saga series. Guts is absolutely cold-blooded and kills countless people and monsters without too much effort. But that's where you have the segments revolving around Guts' mental state and how his obsession is hurting the ones he loves. Sword Art? Not so much. Kirito has maybe one episode where he well and truly fucks up and fails to save people. And to be fair, it's something that weighs on his mind a lot. But Kirito isn't really a character, not in the way that somebody like Guts is. And before anybody says it's unfair to compare SAO to Berserk, the motherfuckers nicknamed Kirito the Black Swordsman. I didn't start this war. They drew first blood. <laughs> They drew first blood, not you. Wait, what? They drew first blood! What is that? Is that, uh... Is that Rambo? You see, Kirito is what is known as an audience insert protagonist. He's not really meant to have his own agency or personality, at least not in the way you think. He's an everyman, somebody who represents the audience at large and is meant to sort of be a blank slate you can imprint your own personality onto. It's like how a lot of video games back in the day had silent protagonists. When Kirito is a badass, you're a badass. When Kirito gets a Gamer Girl GF, you get a Gamer Girl GF. The issue this creates is that to have such an open personality means... He can't have a personality, not a real one. He's more reactive to moment-to-moment -moment issues than anything else. And this is where we dip into some interesting territory. I've already said before that Kirito's personality tends to, let's be perfectly honest here, contradict itself. He's both a broody, edgy guy, and at the same time, he's really nice to people he likes. And I don't mean in that way where he's finally opening up out of his shell and allowing himself to be vulnerable to people he can finally trust. I mean, he's just outright nice to people. So on one hand, he's grim. He's a badass. He's that mysterious stranger. And on the other, he's the good boy hero that wants to save the day. It doesn't really perfectly fit together, but there's a reason for that. You see, a common criticism of Isekai stories is that the protagonists almost always act as audience inserts. On top of that, they end up becoming pretty overpowered just for the sake of it. Hell, if you've watched SAO, you know exactly what I'm talking about in regards to Kirito. He has so many special abilities and so many broken stats that's honestly bullshit. The story becomes more about wish fulfillment more than you know, the story. It just throws things at the wall to see what sticks, and basically has to bullshit ways to get characters out of situations. Now, everyone knows the formula to an easy guy's story. Hell, Kanasuba made fun of it a lot. It specifically made a point of calling out the tropes. Here's sort of the bog standard formula to a basic easy guy story. The main character is sucked into their new world, either through magic bullshit transporting them, reincarnation, or whatever circumstance you can come up with. Upon arrival, they receive some special gift or ability that makes them completely overpowered to any situation they could ever encounter. This leads them to becoming an adventurer, slash going on an adventure due to fuck you, I ain't gotta explain shit circumstances. Their special powers cause everyone to notice how cool they are, and the protagonist quickly gains a party of sycophantic followers that suck their dick, either figuratively or literally. It depends on the context. And it usually ends with the main character having a big harem, killing god, or becoming a king. Now, following a formula isn't bad whatsoever for a story. In fact, the reason formulas exist is because they usually tend to work. The three-act structure is more than just a suggestion, it's a standard. And if you want to subvert that, you really have to know what you're doing. Sword Art, however, has no interest in actually subverting any formula. It's bog standard, almost aggressively so, to the point that it really sort of shoots itself in the foot. It tries so hard to not stand out that it kind of waters down the potential of what it could be. You'd think a story about people being trapped in an MMO by a psychopathic game designer would yield itself to some creative ideas. It could be a dark comedy poking fun at gaming culture. But no, the victims of SAO are literally just randies, not humorous stereotypes or played off as enjoyably stupid. In fact, the situation is taken very seriously, which makes sense. I mean, in this world, thousands of people are dying in a horrible death game. But then it faces the problem where, to be frank, it plain just doesn't go hard enough with the subject matter. It's not a psychological horror exploring the strain a situation like this has on other people. In fact, you very rarely see truly fucked situations, like scores of people being killed off all at once, or really even the effects of the nerve helmet itself going off. I mean, you do see people die, Tons of characters get killed off, but it's never played off as really disturbing or something you don't want to see. You know people die, but you never see the cleanup of what happens after. There's no blood or brain meat, which is convenient if you're going for a series that's to be marketed to as many people as possible. But yeah, there's not an emphasis on insanity or the worst things people can do to each other. You have asshole players that kill others for fun, 
but they're always treated as the exception, the ones nobody likes or respect. It also really doesn't deal with the impact the game has on people in the real world. At least, Season 1 doesn't. You don't see families torn apart or the police rushing to investigate and figure out how to get people out of the game. There's hints of it, mainly during the Elfheim Online segment, where it does deal with the fallout of the end of the Sword Art Online game, but a situation like this, let's be real here, would have every three-letter agency in the world coming down on the Sword Art Online devs like the Wrath of God himself. They wouldn't be able to walk down the street without looking over their shoulder, but it's never really addressed until the very end, and even then it's not particularly crazy or satisfying or really fitting compared to what they put people through. Hell, nerve helmets are used after the incident, they just claim to have fixed the issue that killed people until they don't. The most detail you get on the ramifications of the game is that SAO players had to be carefully transported to hospitals and put on life support, because they, uh, kinda got left to die in whatever room they were in when they started playing the game. So if you lived alone or had a power outage, you were fucked. In fact, what would happen if your Wi-Fi dropped out? Would you get booted out of the game and killed? Cause that would be kinda bullshit. Your head explodes because Comcast is being a faggot about your data cap again. You want me to give you the number of a different cable company that can- Oh, wait, we're it, aren't we? Dang it, guess you have to deal with our packages. But details like this aren't really the point of the story. It's mainly about being a fun adventure series. And the actual main point of Sword Art is the blossoming relationship between the protagonist Kirito and his love interest Asuna. Their bond is sort of the driving force behind much of the franchise. They meet in Sword Art at first total strangers hesitant to grow close because death is always one bad move away but they slowly grow to care about one another and fall in love. There's really not much to say about their relationship. It's sort of a bog-standard, I'm indifferent to your existence until I'm not style love story. And Asuna herself is kind of bland? She's a basic bitch archetype, the mommy-wife GF that acts bipolar as hell depending on the scene. Sometimes she's kind of a tomboy. Others, she's very maternal and protective. Then she's a crazy-ass Sundere that beats Kirito upside the head with a tire iron for trying to hold her hand. Once again, this comes down to that issue where the characters aren't really characters in their own regard, she represents the love interest. So she sort of phases through personality traits to try and appeal to everybody. This is a large part of why people like to dunk on Sword Art Online. It's a pretty surface level story. It's just grim enough to not scare people away and still have stakes. It's just bright and cheery enough not to get super sappy. But because it never dedicates to being its own thing, it ends up not really feeling like much of anything. So when it does try to be serious and have emotional moments, it can come across as downright cheap and almost laughable. The big word is identity. Sword Art Season 1 doesn't really have an identity. It's a collection of marketable tropes put together to sell to a demographic. That demographic being the socially awkward, video game enjoying segments of Japan's population. People who prefer to fantasize about being a badass in a fantasy story for a pastime. There's nothing wrong with this at all, in fact a lot of the heat SAO gets is more about keeping a meme alive than true and genuine hatred. As stated, Sword Art is pretty inoffensive for a series. The only issues I have with SAO is the fact it doesn't take risks. I hate audience insert pro tags like Kirito specifically because they never feel engaging. It's all payoff with them and no setup. Seeing Kirito waste monsters left and right doesn't feel like a big deal because we never saw him have to pick himself up after getting his ass kicked. I mean, you get that one moment where he fucked up and lost his party, but even then it doesn't really feel like a substantial moment for his character. And even then, it's just the once. Every other time people die, it's usually because of a cheap shot by a bad guy or they didn't listen to Kirito. To bring it back to the Berserk comparisons, we never see the equivalent to the Zod fight or the Hundred Man Slaughter, a true test of Kirito's abilities where he either gets out of it by the pure skin of his teeth or has to be saved because the thing he's fighting is just plain better than him. And this leads to a big issue with the series that most people also claim infected other animes, the video game logic. With the glass ceiling broken, all the oppressed groups shall prosper, especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. See, since SAO literally takes place inside of a video game, it has all the mechanics you expect to see. Life bars, XP meters, level ups, inventory systems, you get the idea. This fits SAO because it's a pretty big aspect of the franchise. It's all about video games, so you can't not incorporate elements of video games in the story. The thing is... Other Isekai stories started including these, and now you're more likely to find an AIDS patient at a blood drive than see an Isekai story that doesn't use RPG mechanics. 
even when they have absolutely nothing to do with video games. As in, the main character is taken to an actual fantasy world where nobody else has the RPG mechanics, but since the protag gets to sneak a peek at everyone's stats, they can quite literally break the story to get outcomes they want. I mean, there's also the issue where a lot of Isekai protags tend to just not deal with any kind of strife, either through quite literally not attempting to save the world or go through horrible shit. That's where you get the really slice of life ones where it's like, I opened a tavern in another world or some shit like that. Or they're so hyper aware of what's gonna happen that they basically spoil the fight and then just break it because they already know how to play the game way too fucking well. Meaning that all the trials and struggles a character might have to go through to become a badass can be completely circumvented. Remember how in Vagabond most of the actual duels Musashi Miyamoto fights in the beginning end with him getting his ass beat, specifically because he's not refined enough as a warrior to handle the ever-increasing challenges of fighting opponents that have spent their entire lives doing nothing but improving their craft? So when he actually figures out how to win, it's extremely satisfying. All of his pain and suffering amounted to something. Well, in an Isekai, none of this shit would have happened. He would have had a magic katana that deals 9,999 damage to every opponent, his level would have been 20 times higher than the limit of any other fighter in all of Japan, so nobody could ever damage him, and he would have gotten his reputation of being an all-time great warrior within the first 20 chapters. When you literally boil every conflict down to a numbers game, it gets too obvious how things play out. If you're gonna build an entire series around fight scenes, at least make a cool combat system and make the fights fun to watch. Doing discount RPG maker shit really isn't that fun. You can't be afraid of a wound a character receives when you see it literally only did 2 damage to his health. Plus, it leads to egregious examples of that classic DBZ trope. Character does big attack to kill Batman, there's a cloud of smoke hiding said Batman, and then you see Batman barely reacted to the attack. It's cool once, maybe twice, but if it keeps happening, it gets exhausting, and it's pretty obvious you're stalling for time. Now, it's hard to really blame SAO for everyone using its ideas. It works in the context of this specific franchise, and they can't exactly control what other people borrow for their own stories. But they also can't control the resentment people feel for essentially being the one to really kick off the trope. In conclusion, Sword Art Online is a very inoffensive anime. You can watch it and enjoy it for what it is. A mediocre isekai that's more about being a power fantasy than being the next Vinland Saga or Berserk. And really, can you well and truly blame SAO for any of this? It's stupid, yes, but a lot of other anime is stupid. In fact, you kinda need a sense of magical realism to enjoy a lot of different anime. You know, suspension of disbelief and all that? It's not gonna be realistic, and characters are not gonna make logical decisions. And it's not like the series ever pretended to be 100% logical or realistic in the first place. It's kind of boring. Yes, but that's sort of a subjective argument. I thought it was meh, yet there's scores of other people that downright love this franchise. They see something that a lot of us just plain don't and I'd just be an asshole to dismiss it all as dumb people like dumb things. The way I view SAO is that it's fun to poke fun at. And trust me, the author of the series has done some really stupid shit. But in the end, I can see this being a legitimate guilty pleasure for a lot of people. And the fact that you have a lot of fans say that the series just outright gets better as the sequels go on shows that there's something to all of this. Maybe I'm just being a contrarian. Most videos you see about sword art shit all over the anime and call it a worst of all time. But I just don't see it that way. It's not the worst, but I also can't call myself a fan. It's simply not my thing. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna bash it for the sake of what it represents. I can't blame Marvel for other studios making shit movies trying to make their own cinematic universe. That's simply not being fair. I know some people might be really disappointed I haven't torn this show a new asshole, but it's really hard to muster any real emotions for or against. Yes, Kirito is a wiener that tries way too hard to be cool, but at the same time, the animation's fine, and the story is more just and than anything else. Trust me, I have seen far worse than Sword Art Online, but I've also seen far better. It's the Naruto of Isekai anime. I personally couldn't give a shit about it, but it has a fan base that really likes it, and it makes ass loads of money, so it's already won the war no matter what I say. But that's all I can say about Sword Art Online. 
If you want to check out the anime, I won't stop you. It might drive you crazy with how cliche it all is, but you might also just like it for being a fun fantasy sci-fi story. It's a coin flip, really. You might just want to see a decent, inoffensive anime about a dude falling in love with a girl through the power of video games, which is already a genre of anime, just saying. But you get the idea. It's not compelling, but it won't make you gouge your eyes out. Put that as a pull quote on the back of the DVD Funimation. But fuck it. Let's just finish things up here. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Guilty! That nigga is guilty! Settle down. You have to go deliberate. I don't need to deliberate. Hang that nigga now. I got the rope right here.